So what do you get when you combine the bamboo P1S with the X1 carbon? Did, did that transition work? I don't know if it worked. Anyway, you get the new Bamboo Lab P2S and it's, it's perfect. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank and today we're talking about the brand new Bamboo Lab P. 2S. Now, before all you keyboard warriors arm up and drop the comments, oh, Frank, you just released a Bamboo H2S video and you said that was your favorite printer and it was perfect. I want to start this video by iterating the Bamboo H2S is perfect for me. I love it. It's a big cosplay printer. It prints fast. It has, it, I love that thing, but that is not for everybody. And I'm not going to recommend that printer to everybody because it's a use case thing. A lot of you don't need a printer that big. This thing though, this is the bamboo I have been waiting for to recommend to you guys. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I love the P1S. It was almost perfect. And anytime I would talk to you guys about it and recommend it, the only reason I would push you over that hump to get the X1 carbon is maybe you didn't like the screen on the P1S and you want a touch screen, or I don't know, maybe you wanted the better camera and the AI monitoring, and that's where the X1 carbon came in. Well, guess what guys? This has it. This is literally that bridge I've been waiting for where the P1S was just missing one or two little things and I didn't love recommending the X1 Carbon to everybody and now we have this. So let's talk about what this printer is, the specs, the features, how it compares to the P1P and the X1 Carbon and then we're gonna look at the print quality because I did a really fun thing. I went and printed every single file that I printed on the P2S on a P1S and an X1 Carbon, and we're gonna compare the quality across all of them to see like where this actually stacks up. Now, just like all of the other standard bamboo printers, aside from the H series and the light or like the mini, whatever the A1 mini, uh, it is 256 by 256 by 256 cubed. So a pretty decent build volume size. It's like small to medium size compared to some of the other printers out there. It has a hardened steel nozzle and the nozzle can go up to 300 degrees Celsius with the bed being able to go up to 110 degrees Celsius. It does not have an active heated chamber. I think that is going to be reserved for like the X2 series, you know, like there are some mounting points on the inside that are unused. It's probably for a, uh, a chamber heater or maybe, hey, maybe you can just upgrade it one day. That'd be kind of cool. Now it does have a flap airflow system similar to the H2 series where it has that little that little flap on the front like a spoiler. There's actually an exhaust fan under here in this handle that does help pull in air and direct it over the nozzle or into the chamber itself. However, there is a little bit of an issue with this printer in terms of airflow. There's no exhaust fan. There's no outlet or anywhere to route the air. So as it pulls air into the printer, all of the fumes are just getting pushed out of all the cracks in the printer. Like there's gaps in the door, there's gaps back here. There's actually a little vent back here. And if you want a better explanation of what's going on here, um, definitely go look at, I have it written down here, made with layers. If you go to his channel, I'll link it here and down below about the eight minute mark. He actually deconstructs the, the entire exhaust system and really better explains this. And he even has a fix for it with a hole saw and a PC exhaust fan that honestly, it should work pretty well. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of a gripe with this printer in terms of there's just no good like exhaust filtration or extraction. It just, it just fills the chamber up and pushes it out of all the openings. That's not great. But if you're just printing with things like PTG and PLA and TPU, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. But if you are doing things like ABS and ASA and things with actual fumes, it's just going to leach out. You need some type of extraction system that you can at least hook something up to or run a filter with. So that is definitely food for thought. Don't know how Bamboo's gonna to continue to address that or if that's even something they're going to address, but definitely go check out his video. He has a much better technical explanation for it, more than I could ever get into. So yeah, go check that out. Like all of the Bamboos, it uses every single type of AMS system. It comes, the combo comes with the AMS 2. That's what I've been testing. It can run the AMS, it can run the AMS HT. Um, it can't do the AMS Lite, that's just for the A1 series. And it has all the bells and whistles, print loss recovery, a runout sensor, a grinding sensor and filament detection. And finally, the two big things that make this better than the P1S, you have this really awesome, nice five inch touchscreen, which isn't just the X1 Carbon touchscreen. It is Bamboo's new ecosystem uh, user interface that's on the 
the H2 series. It's on the H2D, the H2C, or H2S, and then may, I assume the H2C, which is just an upgraded H2 series anyway. Um, I love this touchscreen. It is so. It is a just a nice layout. It is very user friendly and easy to understand and follow. Um, I like the upgradedness of it, and it also has a 1080p live view camera with that AI detection. So there is a camera in there watching the print, doing the spaghetti detection. Something that we all liked about the X1 Carbon because it would tell you, hey, they, something's up here, and you can adjust the tolerances on that too, which is really great. Then just looking at the printer, it is a nice little upgrade. Obviously, if you really don't know what you're looking at, and I put the X1, P1S, and P2S all next to each other, most people are gonna be like, hey, they just look like they're different colors, and that one has a touchscreen. They've also gone and redone the entire back of it. It comes with this pre-installed little filament buffer, so you can actually run an external spool. It's a lot easier to switch between them. You don't have to move tubes. You don't have to disconnect the AMS and reach in there and pop off the tube and run it. It has this nice little handle or uh, filament holder, which does slide off really easily. If you're never going to run it, you don't have to worry about that. Um, like I said, it has the filament buffer. Everything, it's just very nicely laid out, and then you have your little poop chute. Oh, and one of my favorite things, it has handles. There's like little handle slots in the bottom. It makes moving it around a lot easier. Now, before we move on to the print quality and my success and what I've been testing with this thing, I want to talk about the pricing because that's a little tricky right now. As of filming this video, I'm filming it on a Friday. Um, it's getting posted tomorrow. I am behind schedule. Sorry, the price, the US price has not officially been released. You can't get this in the US just yet. Tariffs, sometimes we have them, sometimes we don't. It's a mess. I don't want to talk about it, not the channel for it. Anyway, there is no price on this thing right now. However, if you go to the Best Buy website, it is currently listed at $799 for the entire combo, which after doing some research and some other information I've gotten, that seems pretty in line with what they want to pitch. Now, if you go over to, the, uh, to Europe and to like the EU website, you can actually see prices there. I have it written down, uh, it is 519 uh, for the standalone version, 519 euros, and 749 euros for the AMS2 combo. So if you convert that over to US dollars, that is about $605 for the standalone and uh, 873 for the combo, 873 US dollars. But that still seems a little bit high. Usually the printers are a little bit more expensive over when you do the conversion. But let's look at that Best Buy price, right? 799. Now, if we compare that combo price to say the uh, H2S, the H2S right now is sitting at $1,500 for the entire combo, H2S with the AMS2, and then by itself, it is $1,250 just for the H2S by itself. That means they are valuing the AMS2 in a combo scenario for $250. If you go and just buy the AMS2, um, it is $379, so it's over $100 off to get the combo. So let's say it's $250 difference. If it's listed for $800 on Best Buy's website, you take away that $250 AMS2 combo bundle price, you're left with $550. That's a really good price for this printer, and that is just a guess and an estimate. I think with tariffs, it's gonna end up being a little bit more. Maybe it's $600. I do not see it being more than $600, though. And even if it was, if it was $550 to $600, it is not going to change my recommendation at all. That was the price of the P1S when it came out anyway. So if you're able to get this for $600 or less, do it. Amazing, beautiful, perfect pricing, no notes. But that's enough about all of that stuff. Let's look at the actual print quality. I'm gonna get some stuff set up here and we're gonna start looking at uh, what this thing can actually do. All right, let's talk about print quality. So immediately upon opening the package, I threw some Polymaker filament at it and I was running it at the same time. So I would print in uh, slot one in the AMS in one color, pull the print off and then move over to slot two. This way the printer could actually like extend and retract the filament through the AMS system. It would do the purge, it would switch when I would choose the color and the print quality was coming off uh, really well actually. It's, it's, I mean, it's a Benchy, it's nothing crazy. It printed a Benchy. So then I just started throwing all of the stock prints at it and these are just, these are just visually satisfying. Like I have no notes. Look, it's just, it really messes with the camera really nicely. Am I spinning them? Am I not? I don't know. These came out wonderful. It printed this cool little measuring gauge thing, diameter, whatever, circumference. Then I actually let it do some color change, which this isn't really complicated color change at all. It literally just stops at the like the last layer and then just prints the rest in another color. But these came out really good and uh, pretty decent quality. First layer looks beautiful. And then these little SD card holders, am I ever gonna use them? No, did the supports come off really easily? Yes, they are cute little guys. I printed uh, this T-Rex model that I definitely didn't just go and build one of them for. It's, it's a cute little T-Rex. It's a pink little T-Rex. I'm not building this other one. 
you can't make me. And then holders. These are just good to see the geometry of the printer itself. They handle the edges very, very nicely. Um, came out nice and smooth. Let's see if I can get a good... Wow, they are matte filament, man. It is hard to focus on, but pretty nice. Okay, so as we talk about the print quality here, I've gone and added this. All the prints on this side are from the P1S. The middle is the P2S because it's the middle. And then this side is the X1 Carbon. And I did all of this with brand new bamboo PLA metal fresh out of the package on all three printers, same settings, basically the same G code or whatever. And really they all came out more or less absolutely indistinguishable. If I didn't write on these, which, what, which one was each, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Actually, if you see the, um, the Benchy on the X, you can see that there was a little bit of a color change as the print started to slow down and start to handle the details, where the P didn't actually, the P2 didn't actually have that issue. It actually maintained the same color basically the entire print. But we don't care about Benchies. I printed some adorable elephants. This was on the P2S. This was on the P1S all at 0.012 uh, quality with tree supports and the X1 carbon. I think the X1 carbons came out just a little bit shinier than everybody's. But as for support removal, This is the back of the P2S, and man, it came out great. Really no difference on the X1 Carbon, but that's to be expected. I think it's on these brown ones that you can actually finally see. If you look over here, this is on the P2S. If we look on the X1 Carbons, there actually is a little bit of worse quality, especially around the eyes. There is a slight quality difference right underneath the eyes right there. And this could just be that my X1 carbons have been, you know, used and abused and have hours on them, but the P2S actually beat it out in this. And I mean, they're still indistinguishable unless you're really looking under harsh light. And then honestly, the P1S kept up just fine. The P1S's looks just as good. These Raptor skulls came out the exact same way. There's really no big difference on them at all. If I randomize them and mix them up, you wouldn't be able to see any discernible differences on the P1S, P2S, or X1 carbon they're all just coming out great. It just shows you how well these can come out if you just bump up your printer's quality and let the printer you know, do what it was designed to do. These are what I've been most excited to show. These are Dr. Doom masks from VEC3D. I will link the file down below. And again, P1S, P2S, X1 Carbon at a 0 .0, 0 0.12 uh, layer height, almost max quality, and they look incredible. All, all three of them. Um, there is some slight discoloration um, on the layers on the P2S and the P1S, and the X1 just crushed it. But this is the P2S. I mean, there are just, there are just like no layer lines on this. <laughs> it looks so good. But the P1S still absolutely keeping up here. This looks wonderful. This PLA metal, I just, I love this stuff so much. And then the X1 carbon. Obviously, it's good. And let's just... I was about to ding the P2S for some uh, some weird droopy overhangs up here underneath the eye, but I, they actually all did that. I guess it just didn't generate supports there because of the arch. It just didn't detect it, and I didn't go and comb over it with a fine, you know, I didn't really care uh, because it still came out great. Very easy cleanup, so all three of them did it, so I can't fault any one of them, but the support removal came off nice and clean. Everything looks fantastic, no issues. These are just some good prints. And the green P2S and X1 Carbon, these look absolutely wonderful. The P2S still keeping up. That is, God, I need to make a Dr. Doom cosplay. <laughs> now let's move on to a different filament, PETG or PETG. Um, I did send a red ghost on the P2S. However, I didn't clean the bed and the center support failed, but it still printed fine. I went and then cleaned the bed and uh, it printed it, it printed fine. I just, I had a dirty bed. Oh well, sue me. But it can handle PETG like a champ. No notes, this was bamboo stock PETG profile. I think I even selected the specific Polymaker. It's not bamboo filament, it's Polymaker PETG. And it came out, it came out great. A little shiny and glossy, kind of like what PETG, you know, PETG always, always looks, 
almost looks slimy to me, but these came out really, really good. They printed with absolutely no, oh, there's no way. Oh, it did focus on it. It does not, it doesn't like dark colors like this. That looks great. This is on the P1S. This is on the X1 Carbon, which should absolutely be able to handle PETG. And the P2S, this adorable red. And it came out great. And then also as for support removal, PETG kind of more like snaps. No issues. Oh, look, a brim. Whee. So as of now, those are the only types of filaments I've put through this printer. But you guys do know that there is a best 3D printer of 2025 video in the works. And I'm going to continue to keep testing the P2S in different filaments, flexibles and ABS and ASA and all of that. Uh, in preparation for that video, I just haven't gotten to those materials yet because I've been printing all of this other stuff. However, every single one of my other bamboos, the H2Ds, the H2Ss, all my P1Ss, all my X1Cs have been handling ABS and ASA just fine. I have zero reason to expect that this printer is going to be any different in handling ABS and ASA and those types of materials. It's going to do great. And if it doesn't, I'll post on Instagram crying about it, or it'll be in the next video. And I'll be like, Hey guys, it actually can't handle this one particular filament. It's going to be fine. But just make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. This way you are up to date when that video does drop my recommendations, best printers of the year, all the black Friday and holiday sales that are going to be going on. And there will be some updates about the P2S. I love this little guy. So all of that to say, you've been watching the video we're here should you get this printer is the p2s worth it yes and no if this is your first 3d printer if you're in the market for a bamboo you've heard about them you're looking you're comparing prices yeah this thing is incredible uh, hopefully 550 dollars less than 600 less than 600 us dollars i'm really hoping if it is even the 799 for the ams2 combo for this printer this is what the p1s was this printer has everything I've been recommending to people. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I just wanted a P1S with a touchscreen and a better camera, and it has AI for uh, AI monitoring and print failure. This is it. This is already, I know, going to be my top recommended printer for the holidays, for Black Friday. I don't think it's gonna get its own Black Friday sale, but at that price already, like this is the printer to get right now. I love this thing. I'm excited to keep beating it up. However, if you already have a P1S, no, don't sell your P1S for this thing. If you already have an X1 Carbon, good. You have a better version of this thing. You, there's, there's, no dip, there's no reason to trade in unless your printer has a lot of hours or you're looking to expand. But I don't think you're gonna be like, oh my God, the, uh, the, the new P2S just came out. I just got a P1S. You're gonna love your P1S. It's gonna work great. As you saw, the print quality is fine. And actually, I didn't see this announced anywhere, but if you go online to the Bamboo P1S, there is a $100 off code for it right now. You can get the P1S for $450 right now. That's the P1P price. Like that's, I, do with that. Like if you really want the touchscreen and the AI, which I recommend to people, it's really cool. But a $450 P1S, that's disgusting. So if you don't care about the touchscreen because you're gonna be printing off of your phone or your computer, or you don't really have print failures. My P1Ss don't fail that often. It's usually because I have a dirty bed. Go get the P1S while it's on sale. That is awesome. But if you're looking at the P2S because you want those features, you want the new, new, you want the new hotness, this is it. I have no notes on this printer. I'm excited to find its faults and failure points. I have had issues with some other bamboos. They do wear down. They're wearable items. This thing is going to fail in some capacity. It just hasn't failed on me yet. So I do hope you found this video helpful, guys. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please already consider doing so. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw or anything I said in the video, leave them down below. I read every comment you guys leave. If there's a heart, if there's just one little react heart on it, that's me going through making sure I actually read all of them. And I will respond to as many as possible. If you wanna stay up to date on the real time happenings of my print farm, my printers, my testing, my reviewing, all of the stuff I have going on, please make sure you check out my Instagram channel. Um, my Instagram, I post stories all the time just of life updates and things going on with these printers and you get some sneak peeks sometimes before these videos actually come out except this thing this thing was under a crazy embargo and i couldn't talk about it until like three days ago but i think that's enough rambling guys as always thank you so much for watching you have a good day